Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see y'all this morning. Good to have you here. Stand up with me as we sing. This is the day. Let's sing it twice through. Amen. Yeah. 
everyone said? Amen. 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 You may be seated. Let's open our Bibles to the book of John, St. John, and uh, chapter 8. John chapter 8. And I want to begin reading uh, in verse 23. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, he's the Savior, put your faith and confidence in him. The word believe means to depend upon, to rely upon him. You shall die in your sins. Then I said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Yeah, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Jesus said, I'm speaking to you just what God gave to me to give to you, and what I've heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, speaking about his death on the cross. Then shall you know that I am he. You notice the word he is uh, in italics. Uh, it's added uh, by the translators. The original Greek is I am. And he identifies himself with the I am of the Old Testament. When Moses at the burning bush said, who shall I say send to me? And the Lord said, say I am sent thee. I'm the self-sufficient, all-sufficient God. I am that I am. And so he said, uh, I am, and so he said, I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Verse 29, and he that sent me is uh, with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Well, if we're going to be like Jesus, we're going to do everything that please the heavenly Father. He said, I do everything to please the Lord. And as he spake these words, many believed on him for their confidence, their trust, their faith in him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Uh, you can be a disciple only if you continue in the words. Uh, there are many people who trust Christ as Savior, and then they don't follow the Lord and become his disciples. And that is followers of Christ. The word disciple means a follower, a learner, one who acknowledges the Lord and who obeys his word. And so we need to be his disciples. And Jesus said, you my disciples if you continue in uh, my word. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, that's quoted often throughout the world, and a lot of times without understanding what it really means. Let us go on. And the scripture said here, they, this is others now, not the ones that believed in him. Others said, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now remember, you can be a servant of sin or a servant of the Lord. You're going to serve one or the other. And those who give themselves over to sin and practice sins become slaves of sin. Anyone in this world who looks around very much can see that there are many, many folk in the world who are enslaved to sin today. There are so many different addictions and no one can be delivered from those addictions until they confess that they have that problem. The Lord is a problem solver, but he, prob he solves the problems of those who admit they have a problem. Yes. Now, this is one of the greatest things you could ever do is to admit, hey, I've got a problem. And uh, the problem needs a solution. And the solution is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He said, uh, I'm telling you, whoever practices, gets himself over to sin, commits into sin in the continual sense, Sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Now the servant is there for a little while, he's gone. And the servant of sin is going to be lost, and he gives himself over to it. But he said, the son abides forever. And if the son, therefore, shall make you free, 
you shall be free indeed. Now he said, you're slaves of sin, but I'm the son of God, I'm the Savior, and I can, I've come to free you from your sins. Yes. There's freedom, there's liberty, there is deliverance from <laughs> sin. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have I've seen with my father, and you do that which you've seen with your father. They answered uh, and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to him, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. They said unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Now we'll stop right there. I want you to, to notice this morning, especially the thought, ye shall be free indeed. You shall be free. And he's talking about sin. He's saying sin enslaves. Now, there's so many testimonies to that fact that I, I'll tell you, you know, you've never ever met anybody who took a drink of liquor and said, boy, I'll tell you, I hope one day I'm addicted to this so that I'll just do anything to get another drink. There's nobody that ever does that. There's nobody that turns on pornography and looks at it thinking, I'm going to be addicted to that, and one day I'll just have and fill my whole heart and soul with that. No one takes uh, drugs with the idea that they're going to be addicted to those drugs. But sin deceives people into thinking that, well, you can just try a little and you'll never, ever have a problem. But the truth is, anybody who tries sin is going to be deceived by sin and has a problem already. Now, the Scripture said it very clearly, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And he said, you need freedom from your sins. Now, every one of us knows, I trust, that Jesus died for our sins on the cross. And when he died, the Father laid on him the iniquity of us all, and Jesus took the full penalty for our sins. He paid for all of them, past, present, future. Jesus died, and in his death, our sins are totally paid for. When we receive Christ as our Savior, as many as received him, then to them gave you power to become the sons of God. You are declared to be righteous. You are justified in the sight of God. The word justified is a word of jurisprudence. It means we've stood before the judge and been declared absolutely not guilty. And that's the way we stand in God. We're in Christ and we can never have condemnation again because Jesus paid our penalty in full. So in one sense, anybody who receives Christ as Savior is already free from sin. That is from sin's penalty. Amen. Jesus took the penalty and we will never bear the penalty for our sin because he paid in full. Amen. But there's something beyond this for the child of God, and that is this. Jesus came not to just save us from the penalty of our sins, but from the power of sin or the dominion of sin over our lives. He said, sin shall not have dominion over you. He said, you have been freed from sin. He said, live under righteousness. Now, there's not a single person who's been saved, who's trusted Christ as Savior, to whom this does not apply. Everybody who is saved can have deliverance from the power of sin in your life. Amen. Now sometimes uh, I hear people say, well preacher, you know, nobody's perfect. As if that gives them an excuse to go ahead and continue in sin. But the scripture said, shall we continue in sin because we've been saved? God forbid. Perish that thought. He saved us from our sins, not only from the penalty, but from the power of sin. Amen. And he said, you, you are members as instruments of righteousness unto holiness. And he said, I'll give you victory. We sing it, victory in Jesus, our Savior. But so many people don't practice what they sing. 
Is there victory in your life today? Is there victory over your sins? Is there victory over your temptations? And everybody here has some temptations. The devil, the devil doesn't pick on anybody. He picks on everybody. And, and he doesn't leave you out. If you think you don't have any temptations, you are really deceived. Because he works on everybody. You being everybody. And so how shall we overcome those temptations? How shall we live a life of victory in Jesus? How shall we claim that which is ours in Christ? He died to deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. He came that we may be free. And he says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which you have in Christ. So how do we apply this to our lives? How do we have this victory over sin? Well, understand something. We laid the foundation for this a couple of weeks ago, and that is in this, that uh, the body and the soul and the spirit make up man. We are a trinity, spirit, soul, and body. And when we receive Christ, we're made spiritually alive. Those who are without Christ are spiritually dead. They're dead in their trespasses and sin. They're not dead physically. They're not dead, dead in their soul, but they're dead spiritually. So when you receive Christ as Savior, the Spirit of God comes in and He makes you spiritually alive. He gives your spirit life. And you have in you the very life of God Himself. Amen. God is in us of a truth. How marvelous this is. Now, how do we live the kind of life that we ought to live? Let me say, I believe this. I believe that anyone who's genuinely saved has within him the desire to please the Lord. The desire to walk with God. The desire to have the smile of heaven upon them. The desire to, to really live the kind of life of victory and power and joy that the scriptures tell us about. But how does this translate into our daily life? Well, first of all, I want you to know that you don't get that victory by the body. Your body won't give you that victory. There's nothing within your body, your senses, that is seeing and uh, hearing and tasting and smelling and touching and this kind of thing that you do in your body. That's never going to give you victory over sin. And I'm going to ask you in the second place, your soul will not give you deliverance. That is, your soul's made up of, of your thoughts, that is your thought life, and all of the, your intellect, and you can think about it all you want to, but that won't give you victory either. You can dwell on it, make you want it, but that won't give that victory to you. All right, and then at your heart, that's a part of your soul, and that's your feelings. And boy, you can really feel uh, strongly about something, but that won't give you victory over it either. No matter how you feel about it, that doesn't guarantee victory. Well then, what is it? Well, your will. My man with willpower. <laughs> you don't. You don't even keep your New Year's resolutions. What? <laughs> what is willpower? What will that do? That won't do anything for us, beloved. The victory is not in the soul. The soul is made up of the intellect and the emotions and the will. And that won't give you victory over sin. So where does victory come from? He said, this I say, they walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The victory comes by the Holy Spirit who lives within us. Now, the Spirit of God living in us, we acknowledge his presence. We depend upon his power. We follow his leading. Remember, we talked about this just a few weeks ago. And uh, if you'll do those things, acknowledge his presence with you, depend upon his power to deliver you, and then follow his leading in your life. But there's something that I think you need to really dwell on in your hearts and minds today. And that is this. The Holy Spirit is not going to just overwhelm you and just give you all this victory automatically. The Holy Spirit strengthens your spirit. And your spirit is what ought to dwell, not just dwell in you, but overcome the soul and the body. 
The unsaved have not spiritual life, and so they live in the realm of their emotions and their intellect and their will, and they feed the body, and that's the way they live. That's unsaved people. We who receive Christ as Savior, we have the Holy Spirit, but we're made spiritually alive, and now the Spirit is to control the soul and the body. You put your spirit on top, and then the soul, and then the body. Now understand what I'm saying here. It's not really that complicated. It's one, two, three. It's only thing three habits is the body, soul, and spirit. I mean, it's not that complicated. Most people, even 89-year-olds, can count one, two, three. <laughs> this is not something, and the devil's going to say, well, that's so complicated, I can't get it. Don't, don't believe that. It's not that complicated. It's very simple. It's one, two, three. You have a body, soul, spirit. You can either live giving in to your body and feeding your body and then letting your body control you and everything your own body wants, you get it. And no matter what it is, you just keep feeding it and just live on that realm and that's the lowest possible realm you can live in. Or you can live in the realm of the soul and let the soul be what controls your life and that's your feelings and I feel this, and I feel that, and I feel this, and you go by your feelings, or by all your intellect, and you got it all figured out, and you still fall fat, flat on your face, or your own will, your own willpower, you're going to overcome in your own strength, and you're still going to fall flat on your face. So, if there's no victory in the body, and there's no victory in the soul, in your intellect, your emotions, or your will. Where does victory come from? By means of him strengthening you in the spirit. Your spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit has within it the power of God because the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. Now, a spiritual person is one who depends upon the Holy Spirit to strengthen him, and when the spirit is uppermost, when the spirit has control, it controls the soul, it controls the feelings, it controls all the willpower, it controls your thoughts, and it controls your body. How marvelous it is when the spirit has control of us, and that's the way God intends for us to live in the realm of the spirit. A spiritual man is one who leans on the spirit to strengthen and hit his spirit so his spirit has the uppermost place in his life. He's a spiritual man. He walks in the spirit. Now this does not mean that a person who is a spiritual person cannot slip because as long as you are in this body, as long as you live with a soul, you can slip backwards, and sometimes you'll depend on your feelings instead of depending on the Lord. Sometimes you'll depend on your own willpower, and you'll fail. We have to constantly remind ourselves that we're a spiritual people. The Spirit of God lives in us, and He strengthens us with mind in the inner man. There's nothing God wants us to do that we can't do if we are depending upon the Holy Spirit to strengthen our spirits. And we're living a spiritual life. Every person here has that capacity. If you know the Lord is your Savior, the Spirit of God lives in you. If any man has not the Spirit of Christ and the Spirit of God, he's none of his. Romans 8 9. If, you're not, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, you're not saved, is what he said. It's pretty clear. But many people have the Holy Spirit living in them and never acknowledge Him, never depend upon Him. They ignore Him and grieve Him and quench Him and therefore do not have victory. But as we walk in the Spirit acknowledging Him and depending upon Him, the Spirit strengthens us in our spirit and we become spiritual people. Amen. My, how marvelous that is. I mean, you're talking about walking on the water with Jesus. He's talking about victory and power and joy and all the fruit of the Spirit being born in our lives. Folks, what I'm trying to get across this morning is this. Don't depend on the flesh. Don't depend on your body to give you victory. And don't depend on your soul to give you victory. All of your thoughts and all of your intellect and all of your emotions, don't depend on that because if you do, you're going to fall flat on your face. 
make no excuses, make no allowances, say it's all flesh, and I've got to have the power of the Holy Spirit strengthening me in the inner man. Somebody asked me this week, well, what is the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost? And then there is no difference. There is no difference whatsoever. Sometimes the Bible speaks of it as the Holy Ghost. Sometimes it speaks in the Holy Spirit. Same point exactly. This, in fact, the same Greek word is translated spirit. The same word is translated ghost. Pneuma. That's the Greek word. And if you read some of the Greek, you'll see, well, sometimes they translate the ghost. Sometimes they translate the spirit. Same word exactly. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, we're talking about the same person. And that person is the one who gives victory when he strengthens your spirit. My, it's great to have a spiritual people. People who are walking with God, depending on the Lord instead of depending on themselves. Because, you know, if you depend on yourself, even if you've had open heart surgery, you're in trouble. You know, you just can't make it on your own. You've got to have the power of God to live for the glory of God. But listen. Don't you ever make excuses for walking in the flesh when the great Holy Spirit of God lives in you and you have power in Him to overcome every sin, every temptation, every addiction. The power is the almighty power of God. Amen. And there's nothing God can do. So I said, well, I don't think He'll ever be delivered. No. He won't be as long as he doesn't turn to the Lord and trust the Lord. Right. But I'm telling you, God can deliver from any addiction, from any sin, from any kind of power in this world. God's power is a great power. Amen. It's the greatest power. Amen. Now let's stop making excuses <laughs> for living subnormal lives when we can have the power of God and walk by means of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit strengthening us in the inner man. Amen. Uh, we, got, we need a bunch of people. We need a church full of people who are full of the Spirit of God, who are yielded to the Spirit and have the power of the Spirit of God in their lives so they can stand for Jesus and overcome whatever temptations come your way. Amen. Let me ask you this morning, are you fighting some battle? Most of us are. <laughs> Are you fighting some kind of temptation that draws you? Have, you? have you got something in your life you've tried over and over and over to overcome? Your matter is not what it is. It really doesn't matter. It's incidental. Whether it's drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. It doesn't make it what it is. It doesn't matter. Some people have food addiction. Chocolate. Mm. Number one. <laughs> Whatever it is, whatever the addiction is, whatever that thing that you're trying to overcome, that you struggle with, there is victory, but there's not victory in your willpower. Someone said years ago that the greatest definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. I think that's a pretty good definition. Well, I think it is spiritual insanity to try and try to overcome whatever you're struggling with and try the same way you've always tried to overcome and it knocks you down and so you're going to use the same method again and it's going to knock you down again. But boy, you've got spiritual insanity if you think the third time you're going to try it and it's going to give you victory. Victory is in the Spirit of God who strengthens you in the inner man. Now you can have the power of God and you can have his glory in your life. And you can have boldness to witness for Christ and you can overcome timidity and you can overcome whatever you're struggling with if you just simply say, oh God, I can't, but you can. It's not in me, the power is in you. And God's almighty power is available to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. Far above all principality and power and mind and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Listen, the power of God is available for you. Did you know the devil goes to church? The devil goes to church. 
And you know, any time a man stands and opens this book and asks the Spirit of God to apply it, the devil is right there saying, this is not for you. Maybe some other super Christian, but this is not for you. You'll never overcome your, you'll never get it. You know, it's just for somebody else. You're, I mean, you've struggled before and you don't have any victory. And the devil's going to come right to you and he's going to talk to you and say, it's not for you. It's not for you. You know, I mean, this preacher's preaching stuff and uh, it's far over your head and you'll never have it applied to your life. And the devil just lies and lies. He's a liar and the father of it, the Bible says. It is for you. It's for you. Even some old bald-headed tall guy like you. You can have victory. You can have power. You can overcome. But you can't do it in your own self. You can't do it in your own spirit. You can't do it within your own power, and your own willpower and all that. It has to be by the Holy Spirit strengthening you in the inner man. And when he is strengthening you, there is nothing that God wants you to do that you can't do. Whatever your struggle is today, listen, Jesus is the answer, and the Spirit of God is the one who brings that answer to you. He will strengthen you with might in the inner man. If you simply allow him to do so. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who loved us, who gave himself for us upon the old rugged cross, who died in our place, took our full penalty for us to deliver us from sin. And Lord, we thank you that we're delivered from the penalty of sin. And I pray you'll forgive us for not applying the same power of God to have victory over the power of sin. If the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus, I believe you meant that. But sometimes we don't apply that. And we try to depend upon ourselves or our own wisdom or our own experience or our own feelings. And we fail again and again. Lord, I pray, strengthen us with might by your Spirit in the inner man. And may we be spiritually strong because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Grant that your people today would believe your word, accept your truth, and depend upon the Holy Spirit for victory in their spirit to overcome the soul and the body and to live for your glory. I ask it in Jesus' name. And amen. We're going to give an invitation. The invitation is this. Uh, we're going to stand in a few moments, sing a song. And uh, if, you're, if you've come today to be baptized, we want you to come forward and sit here at the front. On the front row, just come right out as soon as we stand. If you're here and you'd like to become a member of our church and you're not a member, but you'd like to become a member of our church, uh, then we invite you to come as soon as we uh, stand up to sing. If you're here and you're not saved, we certainly want to show you how to be saved by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. And if you're here today struggling with some kind of temptation that is making fun of you and the devil's taunting you and saying you can't overcome, then I'm asking you just to sit and look the devil in the face and say, Jesus Christ is all-powerful. The Spirit of God will give victory. I can have victory, and I'm claiming that victory in my life depending on the Holy Spirit to strengthen me to live like I ought to live. And if you have a need in your life, you'll feel a pray. Come on and kneel and pray. Whatever the Spirit of God says to you, do it. As we stand to sing, all to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. Come as we sing.
of faith in Christ, that one believes that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. And that he also, having trusted Christ, has died in that old life and has new life in Christ. And it's a confession of faith in Christ. And it's an act of obedience, for Jesus told us to be baptized. And uh, it's an act of identification. It identifies us with God's people. We're of that crowd. And we certainly rejoice in that. Brother Russ, if you'll come at this time. Russ, how old are you now? 82. 82. And uh, so we're moving a quite a spectrum today of people who put their faith in Christ. Yeah. You want to leave your glasses on? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, just say. All right. <laughs> in obedience to the divine command of Christ Jesus, my Lord, and upon your profession of faith in him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is Nancy Miles. Nancy, in obedience to the divine command of Christ Jesus, my Lord, and upon your profession of faith in Him, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Son. 